Ogle is going through an ongoing phase of development, transforming the landscape with high-rise hotels and architecturally designed mansions sweeping across the coastline in all this grandiose presentation. It is an overture of displayed wealth and comfortable living and indulgence in bespoke property of those who wish to make a statement. No longer can the airstrip be described as such. It has expanded to domestic and international standards far removed from sugar estate mentality and interstate flights. It is now known as the Eugene F. Coraya International Airport with the acronym OGL. Are the kids of today still waving? I ponder. As we drive through, the rapid development is evident as you can see works ongoing on the East Bank to East Coast Road linkage project. That's the Ogle to Eccles Road network. It can be said that space and time are the constant in the continuum of life. In this concept can be discovered the aggregate of events over millennia which marks and identify the life cycle of mankind in the process of evolution. In our lifetime we can only recall our earliest memory and trace it to our present experiences over the period of time. Anything before that can be concluded as history or stories told by our ancestors or from our reading and school interests. I am no historian, but from my experience, memory and reading interests, I hope I can shed some light on the history of Ogo Sugar Estate as it was then and to and so enable you to see how the current evolving suburb has reshaped those days of a hard working class population. The name Ogle I believe is of Dutch origin and this will make perfect sense since Guyana was once occupied by the Dutch in the early days of maritime discovery. The name or word itself means to look at with desire. Slavery, one could argue, was the making of Guyana and sugar was its earliest production. There were several sugar plantations throughout Guyana, but with the end of slavery, planters were finding it difficult to survive as fewer slaves were willing to continue under the apprenticeship system. Thus, planters were selling their plantations or coming together as cooperatives. This saw a reduction of sugar plantations and this trend continued for many years later. However, when the engines appeared in 1938, there was reprieve for the planters, at least to some extent. As the majority of Negroes moved away from sugar estate accommodation, the Indians moved in. This occurred throughout the sugar estates at that time and during the late 1930s and onwards. Ogle was no different. At Ogle, the lodges were located alongside uh, a one, what was once known as a, or rather described as an unending road, red road into the sugar estate. The Negroes who remained in the compounds lived separately from the Indians. Their living area was referred to as the nigger yard. Indians who, who lived near the compounds were deemed nigger lovers, maybe because they became good friends or neighbors. Who knows? Ogle had some 900 acres of sugarcane fields 
and was considered a top producing area. Prior to Book of Brothers, it was owned by George Little and Company. As a boy, I recall riding my bicycle into Oglesugre Estate to where my father worked at the warehouse referred to at the time as Central Depot. My brother also worked there when my father died. Also, my uncle was a truck driver for Buka, collecting and delivering engineering parts to other districts. The Sugar Estate had ceased operating during my early days of riding my bicycle. From memory, I can visualize the building and the canals through which the ponds would deliver the sugarcane to be picked up by the cranes. From far down below, children would wave at the Cessnas or light aircraft as they flew across neighboring districts to their destination at Ogle Airstrip. It became a common occasion when the engine noise was heard and children would run out into the streets to wave. Although the passengers could be seen, one couldn't really recognize who they were. However, the manager of the Ogoshire Estate was a, a Mr. Yearwood during the 1950s and 60s. The airstrip is located midway from the main road to the Sugar Estate. What was noticeable was a reduction of loggies as newer houses were being built and it was a rapid onset. One would never have thought loggies once occupied those lands with his Creole gangs and many other field workers. Of course, there was always a school and religious institutions to be found nearby. We did our utmost to enter the estate to show what's left, but we were restricted and couldn't enter. These houses was once the manager's quarters, but now occupied by various government agencies. The coca stood within Ogre Front and the public road. As you walked into the Ogre Road, it was just on your right. One of the many things that stood out was the artesian well, which was located at the very imaginative street name, Well Street. It stood there like a great steel giant, watching the changes taking place. Even this area had some loggies. I must have been four or five years of age when we visited our uncle living almost opposite the well. His new house was being built but in the backyard was this tired and well-lived-in house on low stilts. Like many places, it was prone to flooding, and I recall wading through floodwaters to the five or six steps leading into the lamp-lit accommodation. One bit of story I would like to share. My uncle's son, my cousin, worked at the airstrip as a teenager, he would wash and clean the planes at weekends. He also learned to fly. There was an incident that occurred when he was on his way back from the interior and crash landed. He was lost for several days before he was found by some locals. I think it happened in the late 60s. I'm happy to say he is still alive and living in Canada. Ogle has undergone tremendous reshaping in an ever-evolving Guyana. The camaraderie of estate living is now dead and buried 
as we observe the rise of massive concrete buildings and wealth in some corners, overshadowing a once hard-working community that struggled to survive in the early days of colonialism. One can only hope that the wealth discovered in Guyana will one day be shared by all Guyanese. With the continuing growth of housing schemes and the gradual disappearance of lodges, the sugar estates ensured the community hubs be become a focal point which solidifies the spirit in encouraging the growth of sports and other activities. Thus, in the very early 60s, community centers took on a different shape. Ogle is very much part of this era, which continues to this day. Over the years, Generations enjoy telling stories of inter-school competitions in cricket, athletics, table tennis and such like. Very frequently, inter-community softball competitions were being held and continue to do so. Leather to willow will attract the Sunday crowd in many friendlies and camaraderie. I have good memories at this ground while representing my home team, Better Hope. There is an everlasting rivalry between Better Hope and Ogle when it comes to cricket. One good memory that I have, it was in an East Coast cricket board competition, Better Hope versus Ogle at Ogle. Better Hope was pulled out by Ogle for a paltry 79 runs and better hope defended that runs bowling out Ogle for 77. Ogle ground has always been an active ground but looking at this ground even in the worst times I can't recall this ground looking like this. Ogle Sports Club would have produced sportsmen that went on and represented Guyana in, at various levels of cricket.
had a wonderful drive through Olga and I hope you enjoyed it too. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel.